Chapter 4, Section 2, Handling Events Events are very important for business processes. Let's look at the following description of a purchase order. A purchase order handling process starts when a purchase order is received. The purchase order is first registered. If the current date is not a working day, the process waits until the following work day before proceeding. Otherwise, an availability check is performed and a purchase order response is sent back to the customer. You see that some parts of the text here are highlighted in blue. The blue text relates to events. But how do we model them here in this scene? We have already seen that BPMN supports start and end events. The circles indicate the corresponding start of a process and the end of the process. There are more specific types of events. We can represent with this little envelope that a start message event is what triggers the process. In this case, receiving a message from a supplier or a customer starts the process. This can be used for representing that, for example, a purchase order is received. We can also indicate so-called intermediate events. You see that intermediate events have double lines. And we see also that different types of end events are possible. These are shown with solid lines. What also catches our attention here is that we have events with a white envelope and a black envelope. The white envelope events indicate that we are waiting for some information to be received. The filled black envelopes indicate that we provide information to external parties. This is very related to message flow. Let's see how the different message events relate to that. If an invoice is received, there is an alternative way for representing this. This intermediate event can also be shown as an activity for receiving the invoice. This is semantically equivalent. We can also indicate that we are sending an invoice. And if the invoice is sent, we're passing the message to somebody else. This is equivalent to showing the same behavior as an activity. Also, when it comes to the end of the process, we can show that an invoice is sent to somebody else as a response. This is the same as sending an invoice and then completing with an end event. The only thing that we need to bear in mind is that start events cannot be readily represented as activities. The start event indicates the point in time when the process is triggered. Here it is the invoice being received. The alternative on the right hand side with a receipt invoice activity indicates that the process was started already earlier and then the invoice was received. This is not the same. So if we have the alternative to show message passing with events and activities, what could be the most meaningful way to make that choice? 
Let's have a look at two examples that are semantically equivalent. On the left hand side, you see that there are three activities for checking application form completeness, return application back to applicant, receive updated application. Partially, these activities can be represented with events. The return application activity and the received update activity are both requiring the interaction with the applicant. For the return application back to applicant, we could use an intermediate sending event. You see it on the right hand side with the black envelope. Correspondingly, the receipt can be shown with an intermediate received activity with the white envelope. Now, which alternative is better, the left one or the right one? Indeed, we suggest that it is best to use events for receipts, because if we receive information, we do not have control over this. So we are passive. If we are actively sending information, this is more appropriately being shown with an activity. This means instead of the intermediate event with the black envelope, we suggest using the activity symbol. For the receipt, we suggest to show the intermediate event symbol with the white envelope. So it is not about activity versus event, but it is about are we active or are we passive in the process. We can also use events to refer to time. Very often we can use start timer events to indicate when a, new, a process starts. It may be the case that we trigger a new process every day, in the morning, every week, or every month, or potentially once per year. We can also use intermediate time events. And these can be used to refer to an elapse of a certain interval of time, or a specific reference in time. We will see an example. In a small claims tribunal, callovers occur once a month to set down the matter for the upcoming trial. The process for setting up a callover starts three weeks prior to the callover day, with the preparation of the callover list containing information, such as contact details of the involved parties, and estimated hearing date. One week prior to the callover, the involved parties are notified of the callover date. Finally, on the callover day, the callover material is prepared and the callover is held. You see that the blue text referring to events are represented with corresponding elements in the process below. There's a timer event indicating that the process starts three weeks prior to the callover day. This leads to preparing the callover list. The process only continues when the next intermediate event has happened. This intermediate event refers to one week prior to the callover day. As a consequence, the parties are contacted. After that, the process comes again to a halt until it is the callover day indicated by the next intermediate event. When that event happens, the callover material is prepared and then the callover is held. We see here two types of time events. Time events can be shown as a start event and as an intermediate event. The intermediate events are catching events, 
So we passively wait until the corresponding reference point in time has been reached. Events do not only relate to when the process continues. They also relate to which branches are taken. This means that events also inform choices. We see here that the distinction between a data-driven XOR split and an event-driven XOR split is necessary. The data-driven XOR split depends on information that we have readily at hand. So it could be that a decision is taken based on whether we have raw materials or not. This is something that we immediately know based on the data that is available. It may also be the case that we send out an information package to a customer. And then we continue waiting until the customer responds. So it could be that our process continues either by the customer sending a positive or negative reply. This is information to which we have only access when the corresponding event has happened. We see that the event-driven XOR split has a different symbol. It is, in, it is referring to a round circle with double lines, saying that this is depending on an intermediate event. Here we see an example of the usage of that gateway. We are looking at a process that is used in a warehouse. Two concurrent branches are taken. The lower branch goes into an event-based gateway that either leads to a freight delivered or to a 24 hours event. These events are alternative. They are racing. That means the first of these events that materializes catches control and leads to one or the other branch being taken. If the freight is not delivered and 24 hours have elapsed, the intermediate time event is being taken. That leads to the activity initiate shipment status inquiry. This means we inquire. Once we have inquired, we take a loop back and we again arrive at the event-based gateway, waiting for the freight either to be delivered or the next 24 hours to be elapsed. In this way, we can represent deadlines in our processes. There is an interesting correspondence between XOR split gateways and event-based XOR split gateways. You see here how an insurer and a client interact. The process starts with the client. The client identifies the need to get a quote. This means that the client requests an insurance quote from the insurer corresponding message flow is being shown here. This message flow triggers the start of the process on the insurer's side. The insurer responds by preparing an insurance quote and sending that back to the client. What the client does is evaluating the insurance quote. There is an XOR split indicating that the quote is either accepted or rejected. This means there are two alternative messages that the client might send. It is a message of acceptance or a message of rejection. On the insurer's side, 
We are passive. We have to wait what the client decides. For this reason, we need to cater for both situations that an acceptance or a rejection is received. The event-based gateway is used to represent this. The quote acceptance received and the quote rejection received event are in a race condition with each other. The first one that materializes takes control. Correspondingly, we may, upon acceptance, prepare an insurance contract or upon rejection, we may note that the quote was rejected. We see that the event-based gateway is actually matching the XOR split on the client side. Usually, when we have such a pattern here, we see that there is some party taking an active decision using an XOR split, while the other interacting party uses an event-driven gateway to indicate that we are dependent on the decision that somebody else is taking. So in this part, we have seen various types of message and time events. We see that there are start and end events. Start events are catching events. So we are passive. We start the process based on some condition, or based on a message, or based on a timer even. When the process ends, we are completing the process by throwing control somewhere else. So either we're just ending, or we're ending by sending a message to somebody else with a solid line and a black envelope event. Intermediate events can be of two types. They can be catching or they can be throwing. The catching symbols are always shown with a white filling. So you have a white envelope or you have a white clock. Intermediate throwing events are black. So we have a black envelope here for intermediate message events where we send information somewhere else. 